say this a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Including the 911? Uh, we won't be using this, but I agree to all our kids in this group. Most of the analogs get them than any other one. Yeah. 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 Are you off right now? Mm -hmm. Is this off? Check, check. Check, check. Please rise to score 12 and 6. Please be seated. Come to order.
seated. to Las Vegas? Rent was cheap, uh, starting a new business, and fresh out of college. Where'd you go to college? Monterey State University. And where's that at? Uh, Monterey, California. Um, after you uh, graduate, I guess I should ask, what'd you graduate in? Uh, Bachelor's of Science in Business, International Marketing, Entrepreneurship, and a minor in Computer Information Systems, Database Technology. Okay. Uh, what did you do after you graduated? Came here and uh, started my own business. And what business is it that you started? Uh, the Web Squad. It's a web design, graphic design, multimedia company support for small businesses. Okay. And where is it located? In Chinatown on Valley View and Spring Mountain. All right. Um, I want to ask you a couple questions about an individual by the name of Christine McIndae. Do you know her? Yes. And how is it that you know her? Uh, we dated. Uh, and what did you call her? Uh, girlfriend. Girlfriend, all right. And what did you call her as far as names? Did you call her Christy or? Yeah, Christy. Uh, the common names you refer to someone when you're dating. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Um, I want to draw your attention to early uh, June of 2014. Is that the first date you guys went on? Yeah, June 7th actually we went to sushi. Was that nearby your um, business? Yeah, walking distance. All right. Um, tell me about that first date. How did it go? Went great. We met each other and you know got acquainted with each other and had some dinner about 7 p.m. Okay. Um, and during that uh, interaction, how much time did you spend with her that day or night? Maybe an hour and a half. Okay. Um, did you um, discuss any of her previous boyfriends at that time? Yeah, you kind of discussed that, you know, in, in the beginning of the opening day. Okay. And she had mentioned that her, her previous boyfriend happened to be an MMA fighter. Did she uh, give a name at that time? No. Uh, based upon your interactions with her that uh, evening, uh, what was your understanding of her relationship with the MMA fighter previous boyfriend? Oh, she said they had no relationship. They had been over for six months. Um, did you guys start dating more officially after that? Yeah. Okay. And did you ever go over to uh, her house very often? A few times. A few times. Yeah. And Three who, or four times. Three or four times? Yeah. Okay. Who was it that uh, was living at the home the times that you were over there? Her mom. And do you recall her name? Yeah, Erin McAdoo. Was there any um, evidence that another individual was living at that residence other than Aaron and or uh, Ms. McIndae? No. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, some of the things you guys did when you were dating. Uh, sure. Did you guys ever go on any trips together? Yeah. Okay. Where did you go? We went down to San Diego uh, for a weekend trip. We drove, uh, took my car and spent the weekend down at Pacific Beach. Okay. Um, do you recall uh, 
was that towards the end of June, you recall? Or? Yeah, it was actually the second week we met. We met the 7th. We ended up down in San Diego the 14th, 15th uh, okay. weekend after. All righty. Uh, and what did you guys do in San Diego? Uh, walked around and ate food. Uh, went to the surfing spot on, in Belmont Park and you know, just hung out. Hung out. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Um, when you first initially met uh, Ms. McIndy, um, <clears throat> did you know who she was? No. Uh, when was it that you kind of figured out who she was as far as it would relate to the public? Probably that weekend in the San Diego. You know, a couple people came up and, and they asked, uh, can I get an autograph with your girlfriend? And I'm like, well, it's not my girlfriend, but help yourself. You can go talk to her. She's very nice. <laughs> All right. So. Um, and so uh, individuals that you didn't know would come up to you and ask if they could do various things, whether they're taking photographs or autographs. And yeah, just walking around here and there. All right. Uh, was that kind of the first time that you realized she was? She had fans. She had fans. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> All right. Um, after that trip to uh, San Diego at the end of June, uh, did you go on any other trips with yeah. Ms. McIndy? Yeah, um, we went to, well, she had an appearance in San Francisco the next month. That was around the 18th, 19th, 20th. So she left on the 17th, I believe, and then came back on Sunday. Okay. And we were in communication, and, and I said I'd be happy to come up and, you know, hang out with you. And she said that'd be great. So I flew up on the 18th. And where was that at? San Francisco. I used to live in the Bay Area, so after uh, San Diego, I moved to the Bay Area. Lived in San Francisco for four years, five years, and went down to college in Monterey. So I know the area. Okay. Um, was it similar type stuff as far as her interactions with the public? Same type of. Yeah, she was a, a feature for a gentleman's club there. And so they were having their anniversary, so I think it was a 40 or 50 or something anniversary party, and she was the feature. So she had a huge fan base of people that came to see her, and when I got there on Saturday night, she was kind of overwhelmed with everything that was going on and didn't have enough people to help out, so I just kind of jumped on and helped her with the merchandise stuff on her table, and then the next day we went to Pier 39 and walked around and just kind of like touristy stuff. All right. And uh, you spent more or less just that weekend there in San Francisco? Yeah, she left s Sunday. I went over to the airport, and then I stayed Sunday night and Monday with my friend that lives there, Sebastian. He was happy to have me for a night and uh -huh. hang out with him, and then I flew home the following day because our flights couldn't line up since I bought mine last minute. Okay. Uh, when you returned home from San Francisco, were you guys in a dating relationship? Uh, yeah, well... While I was in San Francisco, I, I was going through my old phone because I had saved the phone. I had an iPhone 5 at the time, so I didn't end up saving it. And I've got every text message from the day we met to the last thing we said to each other in the phone. I, I was looking through the dates. Um, she would actually text me back while I was still in San Francisco on Sunday night, and she had gotten home, and she had referred to me as her boyfriend when she was talking to her pole instructor dancer about getting some supplements, uh, glutamine and BCAs, because she was really sore from working out so hard. Okay. All right. Um, when you returned home to from San Francisco, um, describe your relationship for us. It was nice. We'd just go do regular things, you know, have lunch. She'd come out of my shop, and we'd go eat a lot of food. <laughs> uh, I like to work out a lot. She didn't, so she went with me to the gym one time, but didn't work out. Just hung out, you know. Right. Okay. And, uh, go to the movies and do s simple things. The normal dating stuff. Yeah. All right. Um, was there a period of time after the San Francisco trip where uh, Ms. McIndy uh, went on a trip to Los Angeles? Yeah. In fact, I wrote a note. Um, uh, you can't look at that. Oh, I can't. Yeah, okay. no, not at this time. Yeah. Um, it was after the San Francisco trip. Um, she had gone down to LA. After she got back from San Francisco, she was a little sick the next couple of days. And so I remember the following weekend, she said she had to go to LA. That was like the 25th, 26th of July. Mm -hmm. And she had texted me back that, you know, I took a bunch of NyQuil and I had a hard time sleeping, but I, I managed. And so she resurfaced on the following Monday. And she says, I'm back, you know, from my trip out west. All right. And describe then your relationship when she resurfaced 
from a trip out west? Uh, just uh, it's, it's kind of the same, you know, nothing had really changed yet. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, did you ever follow her on any of her social media accounts? Yeah, we had, um, you know, Instagram, and so I'd see her Instagram, and she'd see my Instagram. Okay. All right. Um, the, when you got that text uh, from Ms. McIndy upon her return, um, did you guys continue to date? <coughs> yeah. All right. All right. Uh, you said that uh, prior testimony that, that eventually something changed. Can you describe to us what kind of led up to that change? Yeah, so um, when she got back from Los Angeles and she had been, um, that week we had just kind of done regular things. I had a friend of mine coming in from San Diego with his girlfriend. So I was hanging out with him. And then she said that she had a girlfriend coming in from Arizona, which is her friend Katie, and she was gonna hang out with her that weekend. And so we had initially made plans to go to the movies on Friday or Saturday. And then she had said, well, let's not do Saturday, maybe we do Sunday. Okay. And um, I said, okay, well, how about we just go Monday because you know, my friend's here through Sunday night and I'd like to spend time with him and his girlfriend. And she said, fine. And, and then they ended up leaving Sunday and I, I ended up working at my shop late on Sunday. Okay. So. And um, how did the, your relationship change then at that point? Well, she had been a little bit like non-responsive over the weekend. Mm -hmm. So um, on Monday, I had kind of checked in on her and, and social media and seen a few posts and uh, one was a post by the defendant, and he had mentioned something about you know them being together. And so I texted her that Sunday or Monday, and I, I just said, "Hey, she's checking in with me. How are you doing?" And I said, "Well, you know, I'm kind of I'm good, but I'm just kind of sad, you know, about what she said. Well, about you, you know, what's going on and things. And you know, she's like, I know I haven't been giving you much attention lately. And I said, Well, it's not really that. It's just I'm not sure what you want to do if you want to be with." someone else would be with me and then the text message led into you know just very simple like well I'm you know I fall into old habits easily and I said well if you'd like to talk about it you can come over tonight and we can talk it's easier than texting and so she did so she came over Monday night and we just talked uh, during those text messages back and forth uh, did she um, she said that she falls easily into bad habits yeah uh, did she say anything else regarding that yes yeah, she was just like I'm not sure what to do um, I'm not sure what makes me happy, if I'm happy, you know. Okay. Um, so that Monday then, she came over to your place? Right. Monday Monday evening, um, <coughs> after I got off, you know, closed my store up, and she came by later, about 8 or 9. Mm -hmm. And we just talked for a couple of hours, mostly me talking. Just, you know, that's that, that point you're, you're going to have that conversation, like, okay, well, what's your intention now? Like, we've been dating a couple months, and... It seems that you started to talk to or see your ex. Is that what you want? If it is, then okay, go go do that. But if if it's not, let me know. And so it ended up being me talking for a couple of hours. Okay. And I said, you go ahead and chime in anytime you want. And she says, oh, you're doing fine. I'll I'll talk. But she never really did. She's a very close, emotionally kind of person. So okay. Um, prior to that conversation, did you kind of feel like? Um, she was pulling away from you, or I mean, how'd you how'd you feel at that time prior to this Monday? Just just that Friday Saturday was kind of a little distant, okay. and then come Monday, you know, I mean, you know, ask if you have a question and you're in a relationship, ask. That's the thing, mm -hmm. right? So I did, and then I got a, a positive response, and it was like, well, we spent Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, doing things together and talking, and you know. I, I could tell she felt at ease and comfortable that I was just willing to ask and talk about it. Okay. Did she ever talk to you about um, her interest in sex at that time? She, you know, she'd made a comment at some point, you know, that, you know, she wasn't totally interested in sex. And I said, well, that's kind of, it makes sense if you're going to work on cars all day and you love cars, at some point you're just not going to care so much about cars. If you're you know, in the adult industry, and that's all you're doing for work, you kind of get desensitized from things, and then, you know, maybe you don't really care about that so much anymore. It's understandable, though. I'm not sure when the actual conversation happened, and it's over a period of, in those two months, at some point, you know. Okay, so. Fair enough. Ca casual conversation. Okay. Um, after that conversation on Monday, um, did you guys then start doing those normal dating um, things again? Going out to yeah, uh, we did movies and lunches and dinners, and um, she spent the night at my place. And uh, 
choppy stuff. But. Okay, all right. Uh, on Thursday, August. Water, can I have yes, absolutely. Please do. <laughs> on August seventh, Thursday. I want to draw your attention to that specific um, time frame here. Uh, did you spend any time with Ms. McIntyre? Thursday. On Thursday, August seventh. Yeah. And that would have been the Thursday of the Monday where you had your conversation with her. Is that correct? Yeah, it would, it would, so we had a conversation Monday, and then um, Thursday evening was the night of the incident. Okay. All right, so let's talk about Thursday. Uh, when did you first meet up with Ms. McIntyre on Thursday, August 7th? Uh, we'd gone to the chiropractor um, in the middle of the day and had uh, lunch together, and then we decided to meet back up later because she needed, I needed to go by my store, and then she had told me that she had a convention coming up this weekend, Friday, Saturday, a tattoo convention at the South Point. And, Here in Las Vegas. <coughs> okay. And the booth was her responsibility, and she hadn't bought anything or said made any plans to you know set anything up. So, so well, you better you better attend to that. <laughs> you want some help? So, we ended up going shopping like Target, and we went to the container store, and you know. Okay. Um, after you went shopping, what was the plan after that? So we loaded up um, her car and. She went home to her house, and I said, okay, well, how about um, we'll spend the night, get up in the morning, and then take both cars, because there's more stuff to put in, in my Range Rover, and her Range Rover, and just go together in the morning early, like 8.30. Unload it all, help you set up as much as I can, whatever you need, and then I'll go on to my store, and you, know, you can kind of play with your convention space until you get it to what you want it to be. Okay. Um, all right, and what vehicle did you intend to drive uh, over to her residence? Uh, Black Range Rover. Black Range Rover, yeah. Okay. Uh, did everything kind of go to plan? Did you get dinner? Yeah, it went to plan. Um, let's see, she asked for a steak, and I said, do you have a grill? She said, no. <laughs> I said, well, then how about a salad, one of those ahi tuna salads, because we used to go to Grand Lux at the Palazzo a lot. Okay. And it was one of her favorites, so. I went by there and picked up a couple salads and came over to her house about 11 and we watched a movie on Netflix and ate our salads. She fell asleep before the movie was over on, on me and then picked her up and carried her in the bedroom and just put her down to go to sleep. She, that was it. Okay. When you uh, were eating your salads, what did you use to eat your salads with? Uh, they, well, they provide the little <coughs> plastic forks. Okay. So you, you didn't know? need any uh, knives or cutlery? To no, it was the, the rare ahi tuna. Um, in slices, and you just use a fork and be good. Okay, all right. Uh, I want to show you a couple photos here. Your Honor, I believe these have been uh, agreed for admission. These would be exhibits 12 and 13. They're stipulated? Yes, uh, are they stipulated, counsel? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, they are, Your Honor. Then they're admitted. Go ahead. <clears throat> With that, may I publish? Yes, go ahead. All right. Uh, I'm showing you Exhibit 12 here. Do you recognize this? Uh, Christie's front door and kitchen. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and you can draw on that screen for me over to your right. Can you just point to us where the front door is? Yeah, right here. Okay. All right. And on the counter here, um, What's on the counter in this center area? Well, you look, you've got some knives and some old bananas. Okay. Dish trainer. Uh, when you were over at her house on August 7th of 2014, were those knives on the counter? No, everything was pretty much bust up. I'd gone into the kitchen and put the bags down from the Grand Lux Cafe and then taken the salads out of the trays, or the, the trays out of the bags. Um, and then you have to go, you have to come into the kitchen and then go around the kitchen, up the stairway into the um, far, there's a far back bedroom that kind of looks over the street and you can see when the lights are on in that room from the street that the lights are on there. Okay. And that's where she had a TV and a couch set up, so we ate in there. Okay. All right. And then, uh, Your Honor, this one's also previously been admitted by stipulation, exhibit 13. Can I publish? Yeah, go ahead. You can publish any of the pictures that I have. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, and this is just a close-up photo of those knives from exhibit 12. Is that yes? 
Yeah, that's those are knives. <laughs> All right. A knot of the head doesn't get oh, picked up on the sure. record, so I that's why sure I. Question. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. No All right. Um, I believe this one's also previously been uh, agreed to be admitted. Exhibit two. State of for its admission. Objection. It's admitted. This is exhibit two. What are we looking at here? That's the front of <clears throat> front door of Christie's house. Looks like her uh, car is out front on the left. All right. Um, can you point to us on this photograph where the front door is located? Yeah, it's right inside of that walkway. Okay. And <clears throat> does this home have a garage or a driveway? Yeah, it's over here past uh, her car. You know, I guess for the record, I should note that the front door is kind of in the lower portion in the center there, and the driveway and garage are on the left-hand corner. Right. That's what he marked. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, all right, so uh, you guys ate your salads? Yeah. Uh, watched a movie? Yeah. Okay. And then I believe you testified that uh, you kind of carried her to the bedroom. Yeah, she was, a, she was asleep, so I just picked her up and started carrying her into the bedroom, and then... When we got in there, she stood up and you know got herself ready and go to bed. Okay. All right. Uh, I have a couple more photos here. I believe they've been uh, stipulated for admission. No, it's all right. It's just gonna take me. Um, Your Honor, just because there's not a list, it's gonna take me just a second to see what's in it. All right. While he's looking at those photos, you said that um, she kind of got herself ready for bed. Do you recall what she was wearing? Yeah, a t-shirt and uh, some sweatpants. Okay. And um, what were you wearing, if you can recall? I had uh, some black boxer briefs from uh, Express, I believe. Okay. Um, All right. No shirt for you? No. Okay. Um, summertime, so. What was that, sorry? It's summertime. I summertime. Just in, I still didn't use boxers right away. Your Honor, I would move for the admission of state's proposed exhibits of 2019 and 21. Any objection? There is not. They're admitted. This is exhibit 19. Uh, what are we looking at here? That's Chrissy's master bedroom. All right. Uh, and there appears to be a door that's open kind of on the left-hand side. What yeah. would that door lead? That's the entrance to the bedroom, and there's a stairway behind it. <coughs> to the, if you're looking at it, to the left downstairs is the kitchen. To the right upstairs is the room that we were in for the watching the movie. Okay. Uh, in the right-hand corner over here, there's a bed. Is this the bed that you? Uh, yeah, that's the bed we were in? sleeping in. Okay. Uh, which side of the bed were you on? I was on the side closest to the door, laying here. Okay. I'm assuming that Christy was on the other side. She was. Was anyone else or any other things in bed with you at that time? Uh, the do she had two dogs, and um, they were in bed with us, and then we kind of shoved them to the floor. <laughs> Why is that? Because they're big. And, I mean, uh, what type of dogs were they, if you can remember? Uh, yeah, she's got um, a pit bull mix. Uh, is the other dog a pit bull mix also? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't remember the, the breed of the other dog, actually. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so they were bed, and eventually you put them on the floor. Okay. Uh, do you recall about what? Yes. Yes. I apologize. I need to do a better job. The um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. The um, do you recall what time it was that you um, what, fell that, asleep? Yeah. Like one a.m. One a.m. Yeah. Uh, did anything awake you uh, during your sleep that night? Yeah. The uh, I think the Swayze kind of like. Did one of those soft, you know, and, and just give her a shh, right sleep, and then just keep sleeping. I'm assuming Swayze is one of the dogs' names. Yeah. Okay. Um, two dogs, Patrick and Swayze. There's two dogs. One is Patrick Swayze. One's Patrick. One's Swayze. Oh. Okay. Um, does she have a dog named uh, Cleo Pitra? Cleo. Yeah. Cleo. Okay. Sorry, the names are. Has it been a while since you've seen? Uh, yeah, we haven't talked in over two years, so. Okay. Uh, so she had two dogs. One of them was Pitrick, and the other was Swayze, or was it? Yeah, Cleo. Uh, 
Cleo and Swayze. Okay. Cleo Patrick. Okay. All right. See, the name of it is Cleopatra, but it's Patrick like. Like a pit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm just got it so. Fair enough. Um, you hear the dog kind of do a, a soft growl or something along those lines, uh, and you told the dog to be quiet. Was it a shh? Yeah, it's like shh, like okay. that, like. You clear your throat, maybe they're going to growl, bark, who knows, but just right. concerned with trying to sleep. <laughs> First time I'm sleeping in this room, the bed's hard as a rock, and like, I just try to sleep. Okay. Um, what happened after that? So then the door opened uh, to the room, and the lights came on, and the defendant was standing there looking at me. How much time passed from the dog soft growl to the time that the door opened, if you know? I couldn't really say. Uh, I think because I didn't have a watch, but I would say maybe five minutes. Okay. Something of that nature. Okay. You know, it probably would have, the dog had probably heard him come in the front door. Uh, you can't tell me what you think. Oh, yeah. Well, I couldn't suppose on a dog. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> did you believe, um, had you, did you were you able to fall back to sleep after you heard that growl before the door opened? Well, yeah, I laid back. I just put my head back. You're kind of already asleep. You know, you just close your eyes. Right. Okay. Um, and then you said you heard the door open. I'm referring to Exhibit 19. Is it this door here? Yeah, that's the door. And how was it, if you can describe for me, how did that door open? Uh, pretty quickly. Okay. Yeah, the, I heard the knob, the knob turned on something, and then the door, door was open before I even realized there was a door open, the lights were on. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and you said that you saw um, the defendant there. Right. Um, is that individual present in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you point to him and describe something he's wearing? Oh, sure. Purple shirt, war machine. And will the record reflect identification of Mr. Copeland here? Yes, it will. Um, the, so the lights went on at that time, and then you were able to see his face? Yeah. Describe to me the expression on his face. A very surprised, big eye, um, very angry look and could see him say the words, what the fuck, WTF, like really big. Did he actually say those words? Yeah. <clears throat> what happens after he mouths those words to you? So I um, thought to myself, wow, what's, what's going to happen next? And I remember trying to put my hands onto the bed and kind of slide to, up to, towards the sitting position, but before I could get there, he had already jumped onto the bed from there to there, and he had started pounding me in the face, just laying down, hitting my face. Other than the, um, what the F, Yeah. other than that expression to you, did he say uh, anything else to you, or was it an immediate barrage? No, an immediate barrage, yeah. And where was he striking you? In the face. With what? With his knuckles, closed fist. Okay. Um, did he land any of those hits? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, What's going through your mind at this time? Uh, cover my face. <laughs> okay. And uh, we, when he come in and started counting, I heard Christie's voice just go away from me very fast, and so I wasn't sure if you know maybe he had hit her or she just jumped out of bed, but um, then I was just receiving hits right to the face, probably 10, 15 good, fast, quick hits. And I just covered, I started to cover my face as fast as possible and get my hands up. But they were still slipping in. You know, I mean, he's, the guy's a fighter, so it's like you can't cover everything. And um, I thought to myself, okay, I got to break him from hitting me. And I reached up, I grabbed him behind the neck with my right hand, and I pulled him down to flatten him out so he had to put his hands out. Okay. Um, and he bit me in the face, so that didn't work out great. But so you you pulled him down towards you? Yeah, and it broke his his hitting because he was coming down. So as he's coming down, then he bit me here in the cheek. Okay. And I could feel the bite, and once it registered, I was getting bitten. Then I put my hands back up to try and break him off of my face, and then he bit me in the arm as I was trying to push him up off of me. <laughs> So you sustained two <clears throat> bite wounds during this barrage of punches while you're on the bed? Correct. <laughs> I, I want to show you a couple um, photos. Let's see here.
Mayor of the State would move for the admission of State's proposed 123. I believe we've agreed for its admission. Uh, on all of these. Okay, so 123 is admitted. All right. Uh, I'm showing you exhibit 123. Uh, do you recognize this photo? That is me after the fight and cleaned up. Okay. Uh, do you see the bite wound on your face in this photo? Yes. Uh, can you point to it for the uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Yeah. Right there. Oh, well. All right. Uh, is it right here or is it down this way? Uh, that'd be your lower teeth and your upper teeth. In the oh, head. I see. So the upper teeth are this way and the yep. lower teeth are this way? Yep. Um, and then you also said that you were bit on the arm. I would like to show you a photograph of that. You know, the state moves for the admission of state's proposed exhibits 131 and 130. I believe they've also been agreed for admission. All of these, Your Honor. Okay. okay. Everything in this stack. Right. Thank you. They're admitted. Thank you. Uh, I'll show you exhibit 130. What are we looking at here? Uh, my arm. All right. Uh, and I'm going to show you one other photo, a different angle of your arm. This is exhibit 131. Do you recognize that? Yeah. And what is that? That's my arm. Okay. Do That's you see bite. on either of those, either 130 or 131, did you see any bite marks on your arm? Yeah. Where are they at? On well, this whole area is the bite. Okay. On that one and the previous one. On the previous one, which would be exhibit 130, where's the bite? Yeah, right there. So he bites you on the arm, and then what happens? And then uh, as I push him further away, I get my legs out and try to put him in the lower guard. Okay, tell us what lower guard is. That's a position where you wrap your legs around their, um, their legs in ways to try and control the movement so you can move around or get away or come in closer. Okay. Do you have any um, training in um, defense? I was a I was an undefeated all-star wrestler uh, through high school and um, I trained with John Lewis at JSEC Jiu Jitsu for two and a half, three years. I did his website in exchange. He let me train for free and took a liking to me so I'm okay. grateful to him. Alright. So you had some training in it? Basic, yeah. Basic training. <laughs> Compared to that. Thing. All right. It wasn't a uh, profession. No, it was not a profession. All right. <laughs> um, so you get him in this lower guard position, and then what happens? And then he's still hitting me, um, slipping in a lot, a lot of hits. So um, I use my feet and my hands to push him away from me, and I step off to the left side of the bed. I try to roll over to the to the side of the bed and get a foot onto the ground because I thought, I need to get off my back on this bed, and I need to stand up. And when I did, I had my back towards him. He had been pushed off to the side of the bed, and then he came lunging at me and immediately went for my neck from behind and put a choke around my neck. Okay. And when I felt the choke happen, I just kept going with it, and I spun around, and I kicked myself another 180 degrees and pushed backwards on the bed into the wall that was behind it. I okay. think that's where his head hit the broke the drywall. Okay. Let me show you a couple photos. Your Honor, uh, this is again being agreed to admission. States Exhibit 21. Okay. So 21 is admitted. All right. Uh, what do we look at? Is this the uh, Ms. Max bedroom still? Yeah. <coughs> uh, so you said you pushed him off to the right side and you rolled to the left side. So you're headed this way? Yeah. I'm headed from that side of the bed. You got a foot down over here. Uh, sorry. Oh. You need to mark, otherwise so don't know. I was here. I moved this direction and put a foot down here. Mm -hmm. So my, my back is facing him. He came from this way, lunging at me and put a choke on me. So while his momentum is going that way, I thought, just go with it. And I, I pushed off of, there's a step right down here. I pushed off that step and, and thrust our, both of us into this wall here. Okay. Um, after you slammed into that wall, what happened? Then I fell down this direction and between this pony wall here and the doorway there, there's two stairs that go into her vanity bathroom area. Well, not familiar with the room. It's my first time really being there. I rolled left, rolled right, trying to roll to stand up. 
It was and difficult for you to get out while I was trapped between two little walls and two stairs. Okay. And uh, when he came down, he got a second choke in on me, and he got it deep and hard, and it was a good choke. Okay. Just so um, we know the area that you're, um, where you were kind of stuck in, mm -hmm. I want to show you to 44 yard. This has been admitted. By what number? 44. Okay, 44 is admitted, thank you. Is this the area where you were kind of stuck? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. What was that, Your Honor? I'm clearing the screen. So oh, thank you. Nobody else did. <laughs> thank you. Um, all right, so you're stuck here, and he's got you in a good choke. Yeah. Uh, what's going through your mind at this time? Uh, my head is about here. Body's like this. He's choking me that way, and I'm looking up at the ceiling thinking to myself, oh, my God. I'm not going to die in Christie's bathroom. That's not how I'm going out. And uh, I thought I got seconds because he's got it in really deep. I've been choked before in practice with at, you know John Lewis's place. I know what it means. And you you use everything you got, every piece of adrenaline you can muster. Drop your chin, slip it to the side, get get a couple fingers in their way, just pass enough so you have an airway. What were you feeling uh, as he's choking? I was. Starting to see stars and go unconscious. It was on my way. Okay. Uh, what did you do at that time? I got enough in there to get air. Um, got enough what? Got enough uh, fingers into an arm to get airway so you can breathe through here so that the, this comes off. Like okay. that. Your Honor, um, I guess the record should reflect that there's. Um, so the right arm across the throat and then a and then a open palm up between the throat and the face. I think okay. that's a fair. Fair description, thank you. Is that a fair description? Yeah. You just drop your chin, turn it, and get your fingers in to work out a hand inside. Right. Did you turn your chin to the left? Yeah. Okay. Uh, were you able to break that um, choke? I was I was able to break it and breathe. And then what happened? And then uh, he started to talk to me, and I started to try and move around a little bit, and I was still struggling and fighting to get to my knees while I was, you know, and then he maintained a position on my back, trying to continue choking me while I had one arm in, and I was bridging on a hand and my knees, and kind of crawling and moving to the side to get away from that area, and okay. back towards an open space to the bed area. And then um, we had both kind of, well, I mean, I'd, I'd run out of steam. I'd, not a fighter and I don't train for it, so I was pretty tired, but um, I get on all fours and I've still got my hand up here trying to hold off a choke, and he's he's here now trying to talk to me and you know, ask questions. What's he saying? Who the, who the fuck are you? Uh, who are you? Um, you know, this is my girl, um, and you know, how did you guys meet? Now he's starting to just interrogate me, interrogate her. Um, previous to this, in the background, I just heard her screaming, John, stop, John, stop, you're going to kill him, John, you're going to kill him, stop, stop. And, and then now, as he's asking me questions, we're both really you know, tired, at least I'm sure I was. Um, then he's asking, how did you meet? And this is my girl, and he's saying, Chrissy, tell him that you're my girl. Tell him you love me. Tell him you told me that you wanted to marry me today. And she's in the background in a frantic voice, you're right, John, I told you I love you, I told you I'd marry you, I, 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 I said those things today, I did. So so what's going through your mind then at this time? Why am I here? <laughs> what am I fighting for? Mm -hmm. I mean, so, you know, the next thing is logically you're thinking, okay, uh, you guys have some serious issues to work out. How do I get myself to walk out of the front door? Mm -hmm. And so what did you do? So then I, I thought to myself, well, I'm, I'm physically done. I think the only thing left here is to mentally try and change the table and see what's, what's possible. And I just asked a simple question. I said, well, what do you want from me? Do you want to kill me? Or do you want me to walk out of here? What was his response? At first, it was you know not really a response, just a, just a, 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 a pause. And, and I, I kind of said it again, and I said it again, and then I said with a little more presumption, well, I have friends that will be looking for me, and it's it's true, I communicate to many people daily, mm -hmm. you know, and so I mentioned a couple of my good friends are detectives, and 
you know, so I try to just put a little thought process into this, like to look where we are now, what's the, what's the outcome from here? Mm -hmm. And um, then he moved into threatening me and telling me, well, my friends are Hell's Angels, and my friends are Navy SEALs, and you know, how do I know if I let you go, you're not gonna be a snitch? How did you respond? Well, my first inclination is I'm no snitch. And the second thing I thought was, it's pretty possible that I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time, and this girl that's laying next to me may not be my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, well, we just fought, I lost. What's there to What's there to talk about? You know, and uh, did you tell him whether or not you would snitch? Yeah, I, I said, well, I'm no snitch. Okay. So that's that's that. You know, if, if we make an agreement to to handle this and this is over, then that's what it is. Okay. But um, he threatened me again, and and I said, well, you got really two options. You got to kill me, or you got to let me go. And I kind of tried to just change the table and. I could feel them kind of release a little bit. So while this conversation is going on, where are you at? I'm, uh, if you show the, the bed, I could show you a previous picture. Let me see if this one will show you. We haven't admitted this one yet. This is Exhibit 20. It's previously been admitted, Your Honor. Okay, go ahead. All right. Does this show you, or is this, not, uh, would you like a different photo? Yeah, pretty accurate. I mean, I'm right here on four. Um, head down where the stairs are there, where the little step is. Okay. And he's behind me, still trying to choke. Okay. Uh, so he has, what arm is around your neck? His arm? Yeah, is it arms or hands or what's around your neck? Yeah, he has an arm around my neck. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then you're having this conversation with him and trying to get him to release you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I just remember all the blood coming down and seeing a pool of blood, so I'm thinking to myself, I got to make this quick because I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be conscious. I'm not sure if I'm going to pass out. If I pass out, do I wake up? Uh, do I get killed while I'm out? And so, okay. I just try to make it a little, little speedy and move. All right. So after this conversation, you said you kind of felt the release, the grip release, the, the choke. Yeah. So uh, I felt him kind of release, and I, I got to a, my feet and walked around the bed and picked up my things that were there and then we looked at each other. Who's we? The defendant on the other side of the bed, he was still standing. He stood up right here. I went to this side, I stand up right here. I grabbed my things from this side of the bed. I looked at him, he looked at me, we nodded at each other and I said okay and, and I walked out the door. I went up to the other room where we were last night, grabbed the rest of my stuff and I walked right back out down the stairs to the front door and left. Um, how long uh, do you feel like this, how long did this brawl or fight, this feeding last? I would say that incident was 10, 12 minutes. Um, were you able to, um, did you land any punches on him? No. No? And why not? Because I was busy getting punched. <laughs> okay. Um, and the um, times of the um, chokes, were you able to punch him at that time? No. When he's choking you? No, he's behind me. Okay. As you exit out the front door that morning, tell me what's going through your head. I just remember thinking, I gotta, I gotta get to some sort of a safe place because I could fall down right now and not, you know, this could be the end. So I got into my black Range Rover, put my stuff in the passenger side seat, and. When I sat there thinking about what to do next, I had the keys in my hand and I looked in front of me and there was a there was a Toyota Prius, like silver gray Toyota Prius. And so I started the car, the truck, and then I, I made four phone calls and I went and drove to my shop. Okay. Um, I'm drawing your attention to Exhibit 2 here. Uh, do you recall where it was that you parked on the evening of August 7th? Yeah, right about where that police cruiser is. Right over here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and right about there. Right about there? Yeah. And, and you said, well, let me ask you, where did you see this Toyota Prius at? Um, if you can recall. I believe it was right in front of me here. Okay. Alright. Um, when you get inside your car, uh, you said you called a couple friends. Yeah. Um, did you contact the police at that time? So two of my friends are detectives. Okay. Um, 
neither of their phones answered. Okay. And I left a message for one, the other one didn't have a message. And then I called two of my closest friends. And then one uh, picked up. It was on the, the route home. Okay. Um, and where was it that you headed? I went back to my shop. Yeah, where I live, there's um, it's double guard gated with camera system, and I didn't think walking in naked, covered in blood, would be the best idea. So I decided to go to my shop where there's no one there. It's locked up. I've got the key. Walked in the back door and went straight to the bathroom and decided to assess myself, look in the mirror, and see what's going on. Okay. When you got to your business, is this the one on uh, Spring Mountain in Valley yeah. View? Yeah. The web squad? Correct. Okay. Uh, when you got to that, uh, your business there, was anyone waiting for you there? No. There was no one there. Okay. Locked up. Before I get too far afield, I failed to ask you a question. Um, when you were leaving Ms. Mack's residence, did you um, hear uh, any screaming or yelling between either the defendant or Ms. McIndale? No. Uh, could you hear anything that made you believe that there was um, further violence going on in that house? From, from hearing anything? No. All right. What about from seeing anything at that time? At that time, nothing had occurred between them. You know, when I had left, um, and we nodded at each other. She was standing behind him on the stairs, just standing there, silent, looking at me and him. Okay. All right. Uh, and I, I apologize for going back. I want to bring us back to the web squad. Sure. You're back to your business now. Uh, you're looking at your face. You're looking at your injuries at the web squad. Um, I want to show you a couple of these photos. And you are, these have all previously been admitted. Uh, by stipulation, this is Exhibit 124. Oh, hold on, you got to tell me first because I haven't admitted them yet. Oh, no, I move for the admission of 124. Any objection? No, it's admitted. I mean, if you want to agree to a range and tell me what the range is, I'd be happy to admit all of them. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I would move for the admission of states 124 through 138 this time. And any objection to any of those? There isn't, but if you can give me a second, I'd appreciate it. 124 to 138 are admitted. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh -huh. All right. You ready, Mr. Leader? I'll yes. get in there. Uh, go ahead. I'm catching up. All right. Uh, Sorry, this was actually out of order. I would also move for the admission of 117, 118, and 119. Also, no objection. no objection. Those are admitted as well. All right. I'm showing you Exhibit 117. Uh, who took this photo? I took that photo. And where did you take it at? In the bathroom at uh, my web squad office. Okay. <clears throat> that was upon me immediately arriving. I took off my shirt and took a picture, three or four pictures of myself. Um, at, after you look at yourself, uh, what do you do? Uh, I decide I need to clean off the blood and see how bad it is underneath. Okay. Uh, do you clean yourself off? Yeah, in the sink. In the sink. And what do you do after that? Um, well, I'd, I'd gotten a call back from Ray, a friend of mine, and um, he had decided to come over to my business and where I was. And I cleaned my face, and then when he had gotten there, I kind of explained what had happened. He saw my face, and obviously it was just like, well, you know. I couldn't believe it. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I explained what happened. And I explained, look, maybe I, maybe I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and you know, it's over, because I had gotten a text message back uh, from her phone that said he had calmed down, and um, we're talking, and you know, are you okay? Everything's okay. And so I was like, these two have some serious issues to work out, because in my mind, I mean. I mean, I would never, you know, that's, hitting a girl is not something that I would ever be able to understand doing, so. 
in, in my mind. Hit, what did you say? Hitting a girl. Hitting a girl. Yeah, I was raised with three three sisters, my own mom, mom, my mother, and that's not something that would process in my mind. So I thought two guys fought, that's the end of it, and you know, I'm spent, I'm sure he is, and move forward. Okay. Um, and so you said you got some text messages? From her phone to my phone. Okay. I want to go through um, some of those here. Yarn, know, these have previously uh, been agreed for admission. This is state's proposed exhibits 91 through 94. Any objection? No. They're admitted. All right. Um, let me start with, first off, with exhibit 94. All right. Uh, up here at about 10.03, um, there's a text. Is this from your phone or from her phone? Yeah, the green texts are from me, the gray are from her. I swipe it to the right so you can see the time frame on okay. everything. All right. So let's go down then where it starts off with Friday, August 8th at 2.22 in the morning. Is this the text that you received from Ms. McIntyre? Yeah. From Ms. McIntyre's phone? From her phone. Okay. And did you continue on in um, conversation? Well, let me, let me show you. This is Exhibit 91. Right. Uh, are these all the text messages you received from her? Yeah. Okay. What did you think at this time when you were receiving these text messages? I thought these two are crazy. They deserve each other. Okay. And... Um, you don't respond until about 4.33 in the morning. Right. What are you doing between 2.44 and 4.33? So uh, Ray had come over and he said, "I give me the address, I'm going over there. Or you're gonna, we're gonna call the police and they're going over there. And he's like, look at your face. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, this is what it is. And I kind of like pushed it off for a little bit. But then he, he picked up the phone and called the police. And I honestly didn't know her address off the top of my head. I had to Google map it on a computer and get to a satellite view and then find the street and then give him the address that way. So I did over the phone. He's got it on speaker. Um, and then the police get dispatched. They come to my office, my shop. Okay. And at that time, you know, they're telling me that they had gotten reports and uh, that, you know, she was out there, got picked up. And so then I'm like, Huh, so I, I decided to text her, are you okay? You know? So when, by the, when the police arrive at Web Squad, yeah. you're starting to wonder... I'm starting to wonder, you... like, what, what's real? What's, what really happened? You know, you start to really slow down and piece things together now that you're not in such a adrenaline mode and start to think a little clearer. And um, then I receive a communication back immediately from her phone. And when I saw the communication back, I'm like, yeah, that's not her. And why do you think that was not her? Because if you look at all of our communications from June 7th from when we met to August 7th, which is exactly two months, everything, usually, whenever she says or replies to anything, it's spelled out correctly. Um, this was not spelled out correctly. She'd correct my grammar constantly. You know, if I say your, she'd reply with U apostrophe R E. It's just like a going on, ongoing joke between us, you know. So when I saw that, I, I realized, yeah, I don't think this is her. So I asked her to call me. Okay. And then I'll show you exhibit 92 here. Uh, this continues on in that conversation. Are you okay? Yeah, are you? Then you asked her another question. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, are you? I've never seen that come back from her. She'll always spell things out. And I said, did he hurt you? She, she replies with this, meaning he left, no, yelled. And I've never received short answers like that from her before. Okay. Like one word. So I'm like, okay, well, that's, let's settle this. If you're okay and he left, you call me so I can hear your voice that you're okay. Did she ever call you no. that night? Did the conversation continue on momentarily after that? Yeah. And what was her response when you texted, or I guess the phone's response when you texted, please give me a call, I'd just like to hear that you are okay. Yeah, then I get this back. Uh, are you okay? Like, <laughs> us talking is what caused this, I'm sorry. So, yeah, I'm like, no, this is not her. Okay. In my mind, I'm thinking, I don't think this is her. Okay, so. Um, did you receive any phone calls at that time? Yeah, so then I received a phone call from the defendant, from his phone, my phone. And at the time, I was standing in the middle of the web squad with two uh, 
uniformed police officers and my two friends. And so I put him on speakerphone for all four of us, to, or five of us to listen to and, and speak with. And tell me about that conversation. He, he, uh, he's, he asks me if I'm okay. And I said, what do you mean I'm okay? Like, you just beat my face in. I'm trying to determine whether I need to go to the hospital or not. You know, and he's like, oh, this is, this is effed up. You know, I don't think that your father don't think you knew, but this, oh man, this is effed up. And I'm like, well, what do you want from me? Like, you want to you want to know me? Do you want to meet me? Come over here. Because officers were like, yeah, see if you'll come over here. Are they whispering that to you or are they saying it all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so I, I asked if you want to come over here and, and hung up. Okay. Was that the last uh, interaction you had with the defendant? Correct. Okay. Um, did the defendant ever come over to Web Squad? No. <clears throat> <clears throat> I apologize. Um, after you have this conversation uh, with the defendant on the phone, um, what happened? So the officer said that Christy was picked up and taken to Sunrise, and uh, they, the officers and my friends all agreed that I needed to go to the hospital and be seen by a professional. So um, I went. Uh, one of my friends drove me and then they checked me into a room next door to her room and I laid down in one of the beds and they started to treat me with an IV and uh, the things that they do and uh, another uniformed police officer, a, a female, she came in and she recorded the statement from me that I give her as her handwriting because she wrote it. Okay. So you orally told her a right. summary of what happened and then she actually physically wrote it. Yeah, I was laying in bed while they were doctors were trying to do things to me as well. Okay. Um, which hospital was it that you went to? Sunrise. Okay. And um, tell me about it, uh, the injuries that you sustained. Um, a dislocated shoulder, bite to the face and arm, um, broken nose. <clears throat> Initially, the doctor, when they saw me, they said, we're going to have to do a, a scan of your head because it looks like your orbital sockets are, are blown apart. But uh, I was lucky because I have strong bones, and they weren't. Okay. Uh, but my face and my entire head, side of my head, forehead, and everything was so swollen, I had a concussion. Okay. Um, the, how long were you in the hospital for? I didn't stay too long, maybe six hours five six hours uh do you know where christy was at during the, your time at yeah the she was in the room right next to my room were you ever able to um, go speak to her while she was in the hospital yeah so about an hour after i got processed in bed a statement was taken then um i went next door and to see her for the first time and and uh she was in bed and her her eyes looked like they were peppered shut, just like beaten, and teeth gone, and it was the saddest thing I could see. You know, and as soon as I walked in, she was just laying there, and, and I walked in, and she just started apologizing, like ten times. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And over and over and over. And so. Okay. Um, did you notice whether or not uh, anything had happened to her hair? Yeah, it had been cut up. A lot of hair was up. hair was missing, and she had uh, some scar, like blood uh, trails and cuts on her head. Okay. Did you ever talk to her then um, about her relationship with uh, Mr. Copenhaver at that time? Yeah, over the next three days in the hospital, you know, I stayed with her every day, and night in the hospital, and just. Uh, a lot of times just the two of us in there and so she just started explaining to me what had happened over the course of the relationship you know when they were in a relationship mm -hmm. and um how it had started for one the first it was there was a year-long relationship the first uh, six, Jeff, this is hearsay i'll move on sustained okay. the um after um she was released from the hospital where um, did you guys continue to see each other? 
Well, yeah, um, I took care of her for the next month. Uh, the first two weeks, we stayed at my place. Um, I lived in a high-rise tower with a lot of security, and the defendant was still, you know, not apprehended. So um, there were a lot of people looking for him, and she didn't want to go home, and so it was best to just stay with me, even her mother agreed. Okay, okay. so she stayed with you for about how long? Uh, the first two weeks straight. After she was released. Okay. Um, I have a couple of the questions that um, I just kind of want to go in and uh, fill in a little bit here with a little bit more detail. Uh, your nose. You said it, your nose is broken. Do you have any lingering uh, effects from your nose being broken? Yeah. When I wake up in the morning, it's a little hard to breathe for a little while until I clear things out because one side's a lot smaller than the other. Okay. And um, do you still have the scar from the bite mark on your face? Yeah. Right there. It's small. Okay. And what about a bark, bite mark on your arm? Is there still a scar there? a very light, small scar. Yeah. And it's on your right arm? Mm -hmm. Is that yes? Yes, right arm. Okay. And mm -hmm. what you about... don't transcribe well, that's Correct. why I have to ask. What about your shoulder? Any lingering effects with your dislocated shoulder? Not now. It took about a year to heal, but uh, now I'm, I'm okay. How did that year, um, while it was healing, what things were you unable to do that you normally would be able to do? Work out of the gym, doing any kind of upper body, shoulder, chest, back exercises. Um, pick things up that are heavy. Sleep without pain. I mean, okay. Um, the defendant, as he sits here today, in front of you, is he smaller now than he was um, on August? Early morning hours of August 8th of 2014. Yeah, it looks like it. <coughs> of course, it will. Yep. of the um, incident on August 8th where he's uh, threatening you. Do you recall specifically what it was that he was saying to you? Yeah, that um, I'll kill you and your family if you snitch. My friends are Hells Angels and Navy Seals and I'll find you and your family. So is your impression that he would use the Navy Seals and or Hells Angels to kill you and your family? Yeah. Uh, did all of this occur in Clark County, Nevada? Yes. Carol Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Ron. Oh, one moment, Your Honor, before I pass it. Possibly. Okay. I want to run through just some of these uh, exhibits very quickly with you, okay? Sure. Right. This is exhibit 124. It's uh, been admitted by stipulation, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, what are we looking at in exhibit 124? That's my face after the fight cleaned up at my web squad office. Okay. Taken by the police department. Exhibit 125, again, Your Honor, previously admitted. Side profile of my face after being <coughs> Exhibit 126. Side profile of my face. And this one has the ruler of the police officers. Mm -hmm. 
Is that yes? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Exhibit 127. So I have a profile of my face. What's, uh, what are we looking at over here, kind of towards the left middle area? That's my ear. It's a little swollen from being hit. Exhibit 128. It's my forehead, uh, enlarged and swollen from being hit. Exhibit 129. Other side of my face. It's all the same photo sequence from the officers at my shop. Okay. Exhibit 132. That's the bite mark on my forearm. <laughs> I'm getting it. All right. <laughs> Exhibit 133. Same forearm. Exhibit 134. Uh, that's just a, that's a raspberry from trying to be on my hands and knees on carpet. Okay. Exhibit 135. Forearm. Exhibit 136. That was uh, a day after we were admitted in the hospital, and um, I took that picture along with other pictures. We'll go through some of those. Exhibit 137. That was in the bathroom at the hospital. Uh, all right. Exhibit 119. Yep, yeah, that's my face. Is that a photo at the hospital? Yes. No, oh, I'm sorry, that's uh, at my residence. That was it. Few days after the it was meeting. a few days after the yeah Christy was still in the hospital at the time and I was going home to change and shower okay exhibit 120 the state would move for its admission I don't know if these ones actually been officially admitted the state would move for the admission of states proposed exhibits 120 through 121 or sorry 122 any objection? There is not. They're admitted. Showing you exhibit 120. <clears throat> what are we looking at? That is uh, at the web squad. Police is this after that. you've been cleaned up? After I've been cleaned up before I went to the hospital. <clears throat> exhibit 121. Same, same time. And exhibit 122. Same time. Um, exhibit 138, I believe this one's previously been admitted. Yes. What are we looking at here? That is about a week and a half after. Okay. And Your Honor, the state would move for the admission of state's proposed exhibits 146 through 152. Any objection? There is not. They're admitted. Show you exhibit 146. <clears throat> Are these photos taken uh, in the uh, when you came for an interview with the district attorney's office? Yes. And what are we looking at here? Uh, the red redness in my eyes. Okay. Exhibit 147. What are we looking at? Uh, my leg, right leg. Uh, what was going on with your right leg? Um, Is there I, a scratch I just here? believe I just had a, yeah, just from the moving around on the ground and the fight, you know, scratching my leg. But okay. Exhibit 148. What are we looking at? Uh, back of my tricep. And what is this here? In the middle of an injury to the tricep. I think it was from uh, hitting the black table at some point. Exhibit 149. More the, just the raspberry and you know, trying to crawl around on your arms and carpet and during the struggle. Were these photos taken several weeks after the actual uh, beating? I believe so, yes. Exhibit 150. Mm -hmm. Forearm. Exhibit 151. Cheek. Okay. Is this the area of the bite? Yeah. Uh 
It is? Say yes. Yes, it is. And exhibit 152. My other eye to see the redness in the eye. Uh, Your Honor, the um, parties both agree that the is 911 call will be admitted under uh, 161. Is that correct, counsel? It is. So that's admitted? Uh, You're going to publish it? Pardon? Yeah. So it's 161. 161. State move for its admission. Yes, it's admitted. Okay. All right. The order at this time, I will pass the witness. Okay. Cross. in this case was at your business? Correct. And you said it was the web squad? Yes. What does the web squad do? We build websites, small business websites primarily for small business clients. Um, you said you had a partner? No, I don't have any partners in business. Who, when the police came, who was present at the web squad? Ray, one of my friends. Just Ray? Yes. All right, uh, Greg, Ray and Greg. Greg, you got in there by then. All right, who is Greg? Uh, another one of my friends. And it was Ray that called the police? Yes. How do you know Ray? We've been friends for years. We work out together at the gym. What is Ray's, um, let me ask it this way. With respect to fighting, what is Ray's background? Uh, he's an amateur boxer. And does he do any security work? Yes. And what's the nature of that security work? He's a private bodyguard for Floyd Mayweather. And I believe you're familiar with the term you used it in preliminary hearing, maxillofacial. Ma maxifacial. Maxifacial. Yeah. Okay. And what does that mean? It was some that he was studying for when he lived in Europe to become a maxi facial surgeon one day, but he didn't see through it. Was he actually a doctor, an MD in Europe? No. Okay, he just had some training. He was, yeah, he was studying for that. That was going to be his career path before he moved to the United States. And it was Ray that told you, you know, you have to go to the doctor for your face? He said, yeah. You gave a report and a statement to the police at Web Squad? I, took, I spoke to the police at the Web Squad. The actual report was uh, taken at the hospital. When I was in bed, I gave it orally to the penal officer. Okay. Um, let me ask you to, um, let, let me break it down a little bit. There was at some point a 911 call or a call to the police. Right. And that was made by Ray. And after is that yes? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And and after kind of some doing, he Ray got you on the phone. So I was sitting next to him, and he called the police and started the phone conversation. And then when I was asking questions, he put it on speaker, and then I answered questions. Okay. You seem less than thrilled to be talking to the police. Is that a fair statement mm -hmm. at that time? You know, I, I said what I wanted, I had agreed to what I said, and I, my word is something important to me. So, yeah, I was just and okay. it wasn't my, my intent, but, uh, you know, you're not always thinking in the right capacity at that time, and sometimes it takes someone who's not involved to shed a little light on the situation. Okay. So you gave sort of a sparse statement to the people in 911. They asked you a little bit for a little bit of information. Mm -hmm. 
And you then yes. Yes, they asked me for information. Yes, I gave them information. Okay. Sorry, the mm hmms just don't transcribe well, so I need to make sure the record's clear. <laughs> Correct. It's, not, it's all right. Have you ever, uh, other than in connection with this case, have you ever uh, testified before? No. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you? I'm fine. <laughs> so I just, um, you know, sometimes people get nervous and they go back to saying, mm hmm, so we'll take it slow. Um, at the scene, the police asked you some questions? Yes, they did. And they took a number of pictures? They took pictures of me. When you say at the scene, where are you talking about? I'm sorry, at Web Squad. <coughs> at the Web Squad, they took pictures of me, asked questions. Thank you, Your Honor. And then, how long was it that you were with the police at the Web Squad before you were transferred to the hospital? I'd say about 45 minutes. And you said you were transferred by your friend? My friend Greg. drove me, Greg. And how long was it that you had been in the hospital? That, was it Officer Truax that interviewed you? Do you recall? I believe that is the lady's name. Yes. And she made what you described as a written statement of what you told her? I was laying in the hospital bed, and she was asking the questions and so I gave her a statement spoken she wrote it down in her hand and did you sign that statement I did how, how was your vision at that time perfect how was your I guess perception after everything that had happened that night in regards to what how was your state of mind how was how clear was your thinking well when I got to the hospital um, the doctor had said, you've got to have a CAT scan. It looks like your orbital sockets are blown out. You've got a lot of broken bones in your face. And I said, honestly, I don't, I don't feel that bad. Maybe it was the adrenaline that charged me up. But I said, I don't think anything's really broken. Maybe my nose. He scanned me. He said, you're right. I don't know how, but just your nose. And um, I said, yeah, I, I, maybe I just have a different pain tolerance. But I, they wanted to give me pain meds. I never ended up taking any pain meds through the entire duration of this. You stole my next question from me. Well, sorry about that. That's <laughs> no, all right. <clears throat> when you say you work at the gym with, with Ray, this is just regular lifting machines, stuff like that? Yeah, free weight workout. You don't do any boxing training with him? No. Do you talk about it? No. Boxing fights? No, I'm not really into boxing. Now you said you did some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Yes. What, and I'm sorry, I didn't remember the name of the gentleman that you trained with. John Lewis. All right, and um, did you, you said you only did a little bit. Did you attain any belt? No, I didn't attain a belt ranking. Do you know your, your best, to, to the best of your ability, how many times, how many lessons, how many classes, of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu jiu you did? Over the period of about two years, I'd say once a week, sometimes twice a week, maybe not a, not during the week. So you could average around 50 for a year and maybe <coughs> 100 for two years. Okay. And sometimes you did two a week, so probably not more than 150. I would suppose. About two years, you know. I'd take a couple months off not be too involved, then go back to be involved a lot. So we're probably talking about around 100 then? Yeah, probably less than 100 actually. Yeah. All right, so you gave your statement to Officer Truax, or at least you believe that's the woman's name. Um, when was the next statement that you gave? Well, then I had met with the district attorney weeks later. Did you, did you give a statement between the statement to Officer Truex and the, and the statement to the district attorney? I had written one up um, about three or four days after the incident because while things were fresh in my head, I wanted to make sure I notated as much as I could remember. So one evening at the web squad, I went in and opened a Word document and I wrote up a document with every detail that I could remember while it was fresh in my head. So that it was prepared for the district attorney to submit when the time came. To, and 
So when you did this four days later, did you already know you were going to be meeting with the district attorney? At the time, I, I knew I would be at some point, yeah. Well, I mean, I, there was no set uh, appointment date or time. Had, had you met um, Ms. Bluth or Mr. Stevens yet at that point? No. Did you turn this Sorry, over? was there an answer? Oh, I'm sorry. The answer was no. no. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you turn the statement over to Detective Tomiano at that point? I'm not sure if I gave it to Detective Tomiano or just Jacqueline Booth, but I know I, I had given it to Jacqueline Booth. And that might have been a couple weeks later when we had met? Well, when, weeks, when did you meet? A couple weeks after the incident. About three, about 20 days or so? I, I don't have the exact data. I could look it up and figure it out. Do, does it seem like it was about two, three weeks? Yeah. Thank you. In the, in the interim between, probably much closer to speaking with Officer Truax, did you speak with a gentleman named Detective Tomiano? Yes. All right. How long in time was that after your, after your statement, if you will, to Officer Truax? Well, Truax was the, the morning of that incident, right? So um, about three or four days later is when I wrote up my statement. And then the other officer was weeks later. Did you talk with Detective Tomiano after you talked <coughs> with Ms. Booth? He came by, or one of his partners came by to swab the inside of my cheek at my office after I met with Jacqueline Bluth once, but that was really the extent of, and it didn't have much of a conversation. Wait know, just one second, Sure. Yeah, just remember you're on the record over there, too. All right, so Tomiano was after the meeting with the district attorney. Is that yes? Yes. I mean, to be honest, I, I don't exactly remember the dates of when I met with Tomiano versus Jacqueline Bluth and at what engagements, but. Is it fair to say yes to the best of your ability to recall? Yeah. You didn't date your statement? You just opened a Word document and wrote it? Yeah, I just opened up a blank Word document and started writing. I noticed that you refer to Mr. Copenhaver as the defendant. Did you pick that up when you met with the district attorney? It says it right there, defendant. I, I understand so I just, that. At, at, at some point, you I could call him whatever you like, but it's still the same thing. So. No, I mean, you can call him whatever you like. I was just, yeah, it just came to mind, defendant. War Machine's fine. Jonathan Copenhaver, whichever you prefer. I don't mind. It's the same. Okay. Yeah. I believe you said you haven't uh, spoken to Ms. McIndy in about two years. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. People lose touch or maybe lose interest in one another after a while. She's, she stayed with you for two weeks after she was discharged from the hospital? Yeah. Uh, you, without telling me where, that, do you know where she went after that? Yes. Um, and did you keep in touch with her for a little while after that? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Was there anyone else present in your apartment taking care of her those two weeks, the two weeks after the hospital? No. I take it you forgave her for whatever her part was in the 
the night of August 8th? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I know it's obvious, but we need it for the record. Sure. Um, were you ever made aware that up till about an hour before Mr. Copenhaver arrived, she had been texting him? No. <clears throat> were you ever made aware that she was sending naked pictures of herself to him that evening? I was never aware of that. Showed up at 11 o'clock with salads? I showed up to her residence at 11 o'clock with salads. 11 p.m.? Yes. And um, do you recall what movie you were watching? Junction Relevance. Goes to ability to recall. I don't recall the name, but it was a scary movie. And she fell asleep on that? She fell asleep on me, on the couch. I suppose a better question where she fell, fell asleep during the movie. Yes. Okay. And you carried her upstairs, you said, about 12.30? Well, we were upstairs. I'm I sorry, carried you carried her downstairs. downstairs. Correct. Would you say that house has sort of an unusual layout? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Extremely unusual. It's creepy. <laughs> Even worse now. <clears throat> How did you meet Miss Mackendale? We had uh, sushi. We met over a dating site. I agreed to have sushi. Well, uh, do you recall what dating site? Tinder. And how long before the date had you met her on Tinder? We met on the day of our first date on Tinder around 11 a.m., 12 a.m., and we're just communicating via messaging, and then agreed to meet for sushi that evening at 7 p.m. Um, do, do you have a friend in common named Joshua Ibarra? Sorry, who? Do you have a friend in common with, with Ms. McIndey named Joshua Ibarra? The name doesn't strike a bell. You guys hit it off pretty well on June 7th? Yeah. It wasn't really long after that that I believe you said um, Ms. McIndey referred to you in something as her boyfriend? That would have been uh, on a text message. She sent me a screenshot of her texting to her girlfriend on July 20th. So it was just about a month then, a week or two after. And I was in San Francisco at the time on a, on a Monday, Sunday night, and she had already just returned home to Vegas from the that, weekend in San Francisco. Okay, that was the San Francisco trip. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. The, um, you, you said that you always texted sort of proper English, correct grammar, all sorts of things like that. She corrected your grammar? Yeah, I've got uh, I have a history in my text message where it shows me spelling something incorrectly and she replies with just the correct spelling of it. And inside joke. No, it's... I get it. Um, what? Uh, <clears throat> so when you saw the the text on the early morning hours of August eighth that said, "Are you not A R E Y A U, but the letter R space the letter U," that caused you to believe it wasn't Ms. McIndey? Yes. You're in the computer industry. You're familiar with something called lull speak. Of course. Could you just briefly describe what that is? Where you abbreviate words and use letters instead of words. And did Ms. McIndey communicate with you at all in this way? In the two months that we had text communications going back and forth, there would be a little bit mixed usage of like LOL. But anytime it was okay, are you okay, it was always spelt out. Okay was even sometimes said okay, O-K-A-Y. You know, really spelled out. So, with just the letter K or the letter R, or the letter U, that was just weird, off. Doesn't make sense. Would she replace 
the end of words that had an S with a with a Z. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't recall that actually ever happening. Would she ever, for example, um, instead of I have H A V E, would she say like I has H A Z? Yeah, she'd use some slang words sometimes that would be a little more slangy. Okay. And every, cool. every now and again or constantly? No, every, every once in a while, not constantly. Usually with our communications, everything was pretty proper. I still have the, the iPhone here to read through it if you ever want to see it. I, I, I believe you, sir. Thank you. Sure. You went to San Francisco with her on did you say it was June 17th? I'm sorry, uh, was it June or July? It would be July. July 17th? Uh, she went on the 17th. You went on the 18th? I went a day after on the 18th. Was she working the um, the Mitchell Brothers Theater? No, she worked at the Hustlers Club as a feature dancer for their anniversary party. Um, like down on Broadway? I don't know you. It says strike in your end. Okay. Or, I'm sorry, so withdrawn. Okay, thank you. And what do you mean by <clears throat> hustler is in like clubs based on Larry Flint, the magazine? Yes, the Larry Flint Hustler Club in San Francisco. There's, I, I believe there's only one that's actually named that. He owns some others that might be named something else. And when you say feature dancer, what does that mean? It means they pay her to come in for a couple of days and they advertise that she'll be there so it makes a big draw. So fans come down with their stuff to get autographed and see her in person and, you know, so. Well, I guess what I'm asking is what type of dance is this? Jazz, tap? Oh, it's a... Uh, it's not object to relevance. <laughs> What's the relevance, council? That's withdrawn. Okay. The, the Hustler Club is, uh, oh, never mind, I'll In your relationship with, well, let me move back. You went to uh, Pacific Beach fairly early on in your relationship? Yeah, so we met on the 7th. The following weekend, I, I said, uh, hey, would you like to go to San Diego for the weekend? I'll drive, take a road trip. She said, yeah, that sounds great, let's go. And you didn't know that she was some sort of celebrity before that? No. When you were speaking during the course of that week, did she tell you what she did for a living? At our first uh, sushi date, she told me that she was in the adult industry. And I'm assuming you, you took some look, did some research on her on the internet, on her to kind of see? Actually, I didn't. I didn't care. Even after the San Diego trip? After the San Diego trip at some point, yeah, I did. All right. A little more. A little more. And when you did that, did you see her come up prominently on Google in relation to Mr. Copenhagen? No. When you search for her name, then you'll find her stuff. At any point after she told you about Mr. Copenhagen, did you do any research on him? At a point, yes. Any point before August 8th? Any point before August 8th? 2014. Yes. When what? Uh, forget about when, when was that? What type of research did you do? I had seen a post from her Instagram and, and then seen his Instagram and uh, seen a comment that he had left leaving her house on the Sunday before the incident, which would have been uh, I think the third of August. And uh, that's what prompted me on the, the Monday, the next day, to send her a text in the afternoon about 2 p.m. saying, hey, you know, what's, what's the deal? What's going on? And do you want to talk about this? Or Did you 
So she came over to your house that night? Yes. Did you leave that conversation satisfied that you were still dating her? Yeah, I did. Did she ever <coughs> use the words, I I'm no longer with, I'm no longer with him, or we're not dating, or we're not together? At our first um, meeting on the 7th, that was pretty straightforward that we haven't, we've been separated six months from my ex is what she said. And what about on that Monday night that would have been August 4th? Mm -hmm. She told you she wasn't with him? Yeah, she told me she was not with him. You described her as a very closed emotionally person. What do you mean by that? Well, some people wear their emotions on their sleeve and tell you about how they feel about every little nook and cranny and she's not one of them. She won't really confide in a person with her emotions easily, I, I would say, at all. Would you have been dating her almost exactly two months at that point? Pretty much exactly two months, if you look at the time and date. And I, I believe you testified earlier that you did almost all of the talking that evening, that Monday night? Yeah, pretty much. jumping around, but I want to go back to your fight training, uh, specifically with uh, respect to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Did you learn anything about chokeholds? Yes. Are you familiar with something called a, um, I'm sorry, a uh, uh, seatbelt? Um, they're in cars, but <laughs> aside from that, no. Well, in car seat belts are used to restrain. Are you familiar with a, a hold called a seat belt that's like a choke that's used to restrain someone? No, I'm not. You have been choked in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Mm -hmm. Ever choked Is unconscious? Yes, I've been choked in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Ever choked unconscious? I was not choked unconscious. Uh, While well, you train and you tap when you've had enough. And I thought, oh, I can muster through this. and. I'll, I'll get through it, but I couldn't, and I finally tapped, and then hurt to swallow food for a week. So I got familiar with that, how that works. Were you ever, as part of your training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, were you ever taught about the length of time it takes between choking someone unconscious and choking someone to death? No. Do you have any knowledge about that as you sit here today? I couldn't tell you how, how fast you could do that or how slow it would work, no. Okay, so you met with the um, district attorney, say, two, three weeks after the incident. When was the next time you met with the district attorney? I believe the pre-trial. You, you, the, the, I mean the preliminary hearing? The preliminary hearing, yeah. You discussed your testimony prior to the preliminary hearing? I just went over uh, the basics of my police report and the things that I've written. The, what you were going to be my statement, right? What you were going to be asked to testify about, right? And then, when was the next time you met with the district attorney? Actually, that would have been most recently, um, two weeks ago or so. Yeah, almost two weeks ago. <clears throat> and uh, again, you went over your testimony for. Yeah, the same, the same stuff. Were you given copies of, of the police reports that were made, the statements, uh, Detective Tomiano's report? Yes, I have a copy of the police report, my statement, and then the minutes from the hearing. Uh, when you say minutes from the hearing, the transcript of the transcript. Prelim preliminary hearing? Transcript. Okay. Now, when you said that initially, you tapped something. There's a leather folder? That's my binder. Okay, a leather binder up there. 
and you tap that, does that mean these documents are inside there? Yeah. Now you, you realize coming from Ms. McIndae's house going to your office, you drove, you drove past Sunrise Hospital. I realize that now. And you didn't know at the time? At the time I wasn't thinking about going to Sunrise Hospital. And I guess it appears that you resisted for a while going to the hospital. I guess you could say that, yeah. Until Ray convinced you? Well, the officer and Ray both suggested you need to be seen by a professional doctor, so. Yeah. Now, with respect to the texts on, on your, it's an iPhone? Um, I have an iPhone 5 that I was communicating with Christy on. Yes. Okay, and that, those are the texts you were discussing earlier? Yes. Now, I noticed in the pictures, and I believe you said it, you did say it in your direct testimony, that you pulled it to the side so that you can see the times. Yeah, when you're looking at messages, you can put your thumb on it and you can pull out to see the times and take a screenshot. Okay. And obviously, you did that in anticipation of, of litigation of, of, as evidence for the state. Yeah, when I wrote my statement, Thought I better start collecting all of the information from my side as clear as coherent as possible now while it's all fresh. So. And do you, do you think, well, not do you think, do you remember whether you were text chain with uh, Ms. McIndae went all the way back to June 7th? It does. So, it does. At what point in time did you take the, to, uh, I'm now moving forward to uh, August 7th, August 8th. Uh, at, at what point in time did you take the two dogs and move them from the bed? Uh, right before sleeping. Is it 12.30ish? Well, we went to bed around 1, so I would say it'd be after, right about 1 time, 1 a.m. When did you carry Ms. McAday upstairs? About one, just before one. Just before one. Was she on her phone at the time texting? She was sleeping on my on me at the time. At twelve forty four. You didn't see her awake and texting? I didn't. You didn't see her sending any pictures from her phone? I didn't. How, how certain are you of your timeline, of your times? Are they guesses, guesstimates? No, I'm pretty certain. I've got the uh, text that says I'm on my way to go see her with our food and when I arrive. That was at 11. Our movie was about an hour and a half. So in that range between when the movie's over and one in the morning is when we you know, went to go to sleep. So. Did you go right to sleep when we went upstairs? Uh, took a little while to fall asleep. Front bed, hard bed, so, <laughs> so I didn't fall right asleep immediately. How long do you think uh, approximately it took you? I'd say probably 20, 30 minutes. Taking it to about 1.20, 1.30 in the morning? Somewhere around there. And so it was about 20, 25 minutes later that Mr. Copenhaver came into the room? Yes. But I think you describe yourself already as in a fairly deep sleep. 
I was asleep. You, so. you were, I guess, enough asleep that when the dog barked, you went immediately right back to sleep after dealing with it? Yeah, it didn't bark. You just, you know, when the dog lays so, there and they go, mm, and you kind of hear it, so you're like, shh, and you're still sleeping, you got your eyes closed. You're, Okay. First hour of sleep and you're just trying to get there. <clears throat> and prior to <clears throat> where I, I guess during the day of August 7th, and I guess prior to bringing the salads, you would agree to spend the night at Ms. McIndae's house? Yes. So at, at, a, at approximately 1.52, 1.53, a.m., you woke up when lights came on? I did. You were able to immediately open your eyes and focus? Yep. Yes. <laughs> um, I understand you said Mr. Copenhager Haber yelled WTF, not, not me, abbreviation. Correct. Did you see him with things he was bringing in, a uh, bag, stuff to stay that he threw on the floor? I didn't see that. I, no. Holy screamed at you was WTF? Yes. Wearing a white shirt, hands were empty. Leaned over, you know, WTF, and then right on top. You said you heard Ms. McIndae's voice going away from you. What do you mean by that? Well, someone starts to scream and they're right next to you, and then they move away from you rapidly. You hear the distant, you hear it move away. Did you hear the sliding door open? I didn't. Were you at any point aware that she was taking the dogs out the sliding door? No, not at that time. You became aware later? Yeah. So to stop the punching, you pulled Mr. Copenhaver towards you? I reached up behind his neck, in my right arm, pulled him by the back of the head, back, back of the neck, closer to me. You said you were an undefeated wrestler in high school? Yeah, my junior year. I was an all-star county champ. Did you wrestle all four years? Yes. Monterey State doesn't have a wrestling team, do they? No, they don't. I didn't wrestle in college. It, was it after you pulled Mr. Copenhaver down that you both sort of rolled over the bed onto the other side? When I pulled him down, that's when he bit me in the cheek. I understand, but it was right after that that you rolled over the bed onto, I think you said it was the left side of the bed? Well, I, after I got him off me, I tried to step off the bed to get a foot down. <clears throat> and did you get a foot down on this side of the bed while yeah. pointing? Yes. All right. And that was where Ms. McIndae was sleeping? 
Miss McAdee was sleeping here originally. And do, can you see, it's a little difficult <clears throat> in this picture, but can you see that this night table was broken there? One of the legs came Yeah, off? I can see that. Do you know how that happened? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I hit that with my arm when I was coming out of the bed. See this on the nightstand? Uh, the little square gray object? Yeah, do you have any idea what it is? No. All right. When you came down on the, I'm sorry, Your Honor, for identification, we've been going over number 20. Okay. Now this is number 21. So what I'm pointing at, that's Mr. Kopenhaver's head that went through the drywall? Well, could have been his back, could have been his head. It was, it was the two of us, I thrust it off the back and he was behind me, so I have to assume it's probably mostly him. Okay. And do you see this, what I'm pointing to above the, we'll call it the, the Dent in the drywall? The blood stain? Yes. It's, yeah, I see the blood stain. Okay. Do uh, you have any idea whose blood stain that was? I couldn't tell. I mean, you have to sample it and tell me. But if you take 20 hits to the face, whatever hits in the back of the I, head, I understand. you're not we're, sure. We're getting a field in the yeah. evidence, so let's. Sure. Um, you really can't see it on this picture in this depth. But are you aware who hit the, can you see blood on the corner of this stand? On this, it's black, so I can't see anything can't see but blood. black. You can there. zoom on that. Uh, yeah. <coughs> you able to see it? Or is it too black? It's just black. I mean, I can see a table, a nightstand. That's one of those cheap little Target $15 nightstands. I think I've got one at some point in my life. All right. Now, can you see that object on the uh, on the top of the nightstand? It looks like a little bag or something. I don't know. What is, is that? It? Is that yours? I don't think so. Did you bring a little bag with two white objects in it? And no. You put it on? Ms. McIndoe's side of the bed? No, I never went to that side of the bed. Let me see if I can find out. Did you have any injuries consistent with Uh, smashing any part of your body against the corner of that nightstand. Yes. What was that? Uh, my arm. You had a the bite in the arm. I had a couple injuries to my arm and uh, to my leg. Were you bleeding from your arm profusely? Uh, not nearly as profuse as my face. So no. Were you, were you bleeding at all? Yeah, I was bleeding from my arm, multiple places. Where? Uh, here, here. Well, this is the bite, right? Yeah, there was a there was a, there was a bite here, and then there was another inside um, damage. I think it might have come from um, just wrestling or roughing That's around. That's the raspberry. You just and I have a raspberry down here, so you have to look at the pictures, but you can see them all. All right, but the raspberry wasn't from the side of the table. I doubt it because that's more like a carpet burn. Right, and you can tell the difference between a carpet burn and a, a point of something. Of course, yeah. I had uh, I had another um, injury in there somewhere that was like a corner of a table that it hit something. So, but, yeah. Was there a lot of blood that came from it? I don't believe so. I, I pretty much healed pretty fast. I've got a lot of platelets I hear, so they, the blood <laughs> clotted really quick. Understood. Uh, I mean, was there, was there like a, a 
ton of blood all over that part of your arm. I mean, I, don't, I couldn't say. Most of it ended up in the floor where I ended up spending a lot of my time. And so my arms were rubbing against the floor and there's a lot of blood all over the floor from me, from my face, my arms, my... Right, what was the, the first choke that you described? That was when I had put my foot down on the side of the bed and then he came from behind and put a choke on me. When you I say felt put, it, put a choke on you, that's Mr. Copenhagen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And again, the left side of the bed over here, we're on point. Is that right yes? around there? Well, it's the right side of the bed, but you said left. I don't. I'm Where sorry. you're pointing, yeah, it's right I'm there. I'm sorry, left foot. Sure. There you go. Uh, so that was the first, the first choke. Yes. How long did that last? Seconds. Did you um, begin was, to lose consciousness at all? No. Was that when you put Mr. Copenhaver in the uh, in the lower guard? I put him in the lower guard before that. Okay, when you're putting someone in a lower guard, where is your neck in respect to their I guess bicep in her arm. Well, I'd be laying down on my back with my, you'd be on your knees and I'd have my feet wrapped around you. So, uh, it'd be far away. I mean, you, would, you wouldn't be able to get behind someone because you're, you're staring at each other face to face. So you can't choke someone from behind in the lower guard. Was that was that choke able to strangle you to unconsciousness? The first choke? Yes. No, because I spun around and threw us both into that wall. Okay, and then you would, and then it, it's true, isn't it, that you came tumbling to the ground? Yeah, we hit the wall and then we fell down to the left of that wall. Now I'm looking. I'll point over there. Now I'm looking at a pony wall, and it looks like it may be sort of. Another little pony wall. Did you fall between there? Yeah, we fell, we fell between there. And that's the other picture we saw of the kind of blood on the steps, the little steps. Yeah, those there's two little steps that go up into where the vanity is, and then the shower is in this doorway up there. So we fell right there behind that pony wall. Mm -hmm. And I think at this point everyone probably understands, but a pony wall is like a, a short half wall. Yep. Okay, now the second choke, that occurred in that area, the area we've just been describing? Correct. And that was what you would call a rear naked choke? Are you familiar with that term? I'm not. Okay. So, so that was just, it was a choke. I was getting choked. You were getting choked. And for how long did that last? Oh, I'd have to say 15 to 20 seconds. Long enough that when you're struggling to breathe because you're tired and it's in high and tight, you, know, you think you're you're going to be out of, out of air in another couple seconds. I see. So you were at that point, you were panting already? Oh, yeah. Are you roughly the same size now as you were on August 8th, 2014? Roughly. Uh, approximately <coughs> how, how uh, tall, how much do you weigh? About six feet tall, 205 pounds, four pounds. And after about 20 seconds, you said you were able to get enough fingers in the choke to 
I guess not break it, but breathe. Right, get enough wiggle room for air. What was being said at that time? Nothing had been said by him or me at that time. Just Christy screaming in the background. That was the John stop that was on the phone call? Yeah, John, you're gonna kill him, stop, you're gonna kill him. So then it was after you, you broke the, I'm sorry, or after you got your hand in the second choke that you began to get interrogated? Correct. And I know you give us kind of the gist of the questions, but if you can recall, how, how many questions? How long did the questioning last? I think it lasted about three or four minutes. And that was um, Christy telling you loved me? Correct. That was and, part of it. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was part of it. Okay, and Christy um, tell him that um, you asked me to marry you? Yes. And um, I'm sorry, at the beginning he was asking you who you were? Correct. And he was also asking I'll say Ms. McAnee, but he was saying, Christy, who is this? Yeah, and he asked me, uh, how did you meet? No. And you were responding to these questions? I was panting and trying to respond, still struggling to get enough air, but you know, I was, my, my voice was so faint, you couldn't hear me really at first, and kept repeating the questions. All right, and they loosened up a little bit so he can talk to you? Yeah, by this time I had a whole kind of arm up in there. Do you remember what else, what other types of questions? I think I pretty much well said it. I, I don't have much more to offer you. It, it was during that choke that you, um, for lack of a better term, I'll say, asked Mr. Copenhaver if he'd let you go or asked him if he's going to let you go. I said, what do you want to do with me? You want to kill me? Or do you want, you, do you want me to walk out of here? Did you respond to that? You paused. I had to think about it, and that was kind of the idea of the question. So you kind of had your wits about you at that point? Yeah, I still have my wits about me. And at what point did you tell him that you had friends that were detectives? During that conversation. And that was before he said, well, I have friends who are Hells Angels and Navy SEALs? Yes, it was just before that. So you said that, and that was his response to you? Correct. Uh, and uh, your friends that are detectives, they're not either of the detectives that were involved in this case? No. Did you speak with two detectives, or just Detective Tomiana? Tomiana was the detective for this case, and I believe Diaz. There was a, a detective named Diaz that was also... That spoke to you? After, I think he came to swab my cheek for a... Uh, what they call a buckle swab? Sure. Like you see on police shows, they took out DNA. tip They had my DNA. Oh, okay. DNA was the word you were searching. Yeah. All right. Council, come on up for a sec. <laughs>
we're going to go ahead and uh, break for the night. Um, we are scheduled to start tomorrow at 1030. So I'm going to do my best to be done with the matters I have early in the morning so we can get going at 1030. Between now and then, you are admonished not to talk or converse among yourselves or with anyone else on any subject connected with this trial, or to read, watch, or listen to any report of or commentary on the trial, or any person connected with this trial by any medium of information, including without limitation, newspapers, television, the internet, or radio, or to form or express any opinion on any subject connected with this trial until the case is finally submitted to you. Have a good night. We'll see you at 10.30. All rise. Course All right, Kim, we're good to go. Parking gas, only if you take any more. Only if you hand it more. Only if you hand it more. Good night, good night. I'm going to make you all terrible. Good night. Thank you. Only if you take any more.